Stirring the pot is an analogy of doing something with little effort, but draws emotion and opinion. There's a particular topic that's generated quite a buzz from one of my eyes wide shut commentaries, and it came about from a third rate observation and an off the cuff joke. Funny, huh? We're going to talk about it. As always, the alternative theories mentioned within may cause anxiety, rage, and disbelief. But that's why you're here, I hope. And kindly consider leaving a like, share, or subscribe if you enjoy this video. Not a coincidence that stirring the pot involves food, because food is the subject of today's video and why we don't see any in Victor Ziegler's opulent party. This is a difference between intention and inference, an example between judging what we think Kubrick wanted versus what we, the audience, walk away believing. The clues don't have to be so obvious. Some hide in plain sight and go unnoticed after many viewings. Food is a curious subject, partly because it is something we relate to. If we were invited to a party, alcohol or not, having no food is something many would pick up right away. However, this doesn't apply when watching a movie. Because film is not real life, right? To a casual viewer or someone pragmatic, it will be argued that the lack of food in the scene is irrelevant. If you don't see it, it doesn't matter. It's a party filled with people. The alcohol and drinking glasses are only props. Having food, as I think is practical, wouldn't add anything because nothing of value was lost by not having it. We all can agree that Ziegler's party is a place where characters are introduced to each other. Ziegler is extremely wealthy, married, and morally compromised. Bill saves Mandy's life, which comes into play later. The first few scenes in the opening act establish the tone of the film. It's a one of salacious yearnings and temptation at the cost of marital instability. Just ask Mrs. Ziegler. There may be many good production reasons to omit a buffet table from the film set. But when you offer less food than a children's birthday party, people will notice. This is why I distinguish Kubrick's intent from the audience's interpretation. I was going to make a comment about how some of us don't have the luxury to pause a video and research the internet, but there's that Kubrick moon landing theory out there. So there's that. And food is not a forbidden subject when it comes to the world of Eyes Wide Shut. Alice enjoys some snack wells. Bill is into tuna salad and coffee. There's an entire scene inside a diner that's open 24 hours or only from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Is food only for the working class? Alcohol is portrayed in movies commonly as a sin. Its gluttony ranks up there with greed and lust. We get that from Ziegler in one short minute. The bottles served at Ziegler's party make an appearance late in Victor's study, something you'd expect from a host since no one is going to throw out good liquor. The bottles are used as background props, seen but not mentioned, to remind us that Mandy is the link that ties Victor, Bill, and the party together. However, you could argue the bottles are another example of something that didn't have to be there. More so, considering Victor doesn't serve Bill a drink from one of the leftover bottles, but from a fancy decanter, like any rich snob film villain would. He only drinks the good stuff. Speaking of seen but not mentioned, there is an ice bucket and champagne in Ziegler's bathroom pleasure parlor. Victor even carries a drink while sitting in his throne. It's part of his identity, as well as women, money, and power, but not food. Are there subtle messages buried in Ziegler's party? Of course there is. This is a Stanley Kubrick film. He either puts messages everywhere, or many of his fans think he puts messages everywhere. When was the last time you talked about The Shining from the ABC miniseries? Clues are buried in the lighting fixtures. It's even in Ziegler's choice of staff. Sometimes there are clues in things you don't see. You have to listen to the notes she's not playing. The lack of food is just one of many that indicate we are walking through a dream. It is a fabrication of what a party would look like with enough required elements to be convincing while exaggerating some. Eyes Wide Shut 
is full of references to daydreams, nightmares, and fantasies throughout. The lighting and cinematography is deliberately crafted to appear surreal, almost unnatural. Considering Eyes Wide Shut is adapted from the 1926 novella Traum Novel or Dream Story written by Arthur Schnitzler, it makes sense. Remember when I said this is a film and not real life. Movies also fabricate believable worlds with design, symbolism, and props to make you accept what you see as reality. This isn't Greenwich Village. It's built on a soundstage. No, this isn't a real Christmas party. It's make-believe. But so are dreams. Dreams, much like a movie set, have props, a general theme at times, and recurring characters. They have exaggerations, and if you are lucid enough, notice things missing that should not have been. Ziegler's party has a checklist of things you'll find in a dream. Let's start with exaggerations. There are the party guests and the venue. Ziegler's home is built as a banquet hall. We know this is his home because Bill returns later to Victor's study. The number of guests is over the top, not to mention the floor plan. How many more guests would it take for Ziegler to consider hosting his party elsewhere? There isn't even a crack about the mammoth size of the place. True, Bill and Alice have visited before, but there isn't a sentence of exposition for the audience's benefit. It's all assumed as normal. The lighting is a deliberate Kubrick cinematic motif. It is dreamy by design. We're supposed to be fascinated and take it for granted, as most of us do during the holidays. Some dreams, the more rated R kind, have out the blue temptation or illicit fantasies. Depending on the dreamer's alter ego, may experience apprehension and self-doubt. More prevalent is sudden change of tone and atmosphere. Bill's dream wanders from a dance with his wife, to reuniting with old acquaintances, to be tempted by sirens, before finally whisked up and above to a sobering life and death situation some party. Then there are the characters in a dream. Along with your familiar family and friends who drive the message of the dream, the NPCs. The NPCs are your background and fillers. You're not supposed to pay too much attention, but your brain does. They can appear again in future dreams, taking up similar roles. There is the music. It is as subtle of a clue as the lack of food. It is out of sync throughout the scene. I'm in the mood for love, plays when Bill and Alice enter Victor's palace and continues uninterrupted through its end a minute and 50 seconds later. However, there is a dissolve into a jump cut in the middle of it. The music plays in real time. This is unnatural, even may be described as surreal. We're not supposed to notice, just like we're not supposed to notice seeing the violin player in an opening extreme wide shot, but don't hear him. Alice makes a comment about how Nick is a pretty good piano player as a doctor, but at that moment we don't hear any keys. If you hear the music differently, let me know below in the comments. The Christmas party is unique to the film and not included in the novella. It's a contemporary prologue to what's found in Trom Novelle. It's one long foreshadowing of things to come. There will be emotional separation between Bill and Alice. Nick Nightingale will exit the way Bill welcomed him, with bodily contact. Bill will be teased, but never get the other woman. He'll see Mandy on the second floor moments before she's headed for the morgue. Finally, his immediate future depends on Victor's charity. Eyes Wide Shut plays out like a dream. Ziegler's soiree is one long premonition a vision of things to come. Let me know in the comments below what clues do you see in Victor Ziegler's party. This is Mr. Gia Sinji saying, you have food, so guests don't get smashed too quickly. There's a joke here somewhere. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.